Today, we're going to make a medieval style bench seat. That's coming up. Awesome is this this is awesome so awesome and this is exactly the kind of stuff you might want to consider if you're into medieval camping historical events renaissance fairs and all of that kind of thing let's take a look at some plans alrighty guys so today we're gonna to make a medieval style bench seat uh, I wanted to have a couple of these produced to go along with the table that I've just recently manufactured so, so now there's a bunch of different ways these can be produced. Let's look at some history here. Now we don't have a whole lot of knowledge about early medieval style um, of any kind of seating arrangements that they may have had. Uh, I say early medieval because the focus of this channel really is um, 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th centuries. We do know that um, Definitely in the halls and so on, tables and chairs would have been fairly commonplace. Although the halls were very much multi-use type environments. So uh, furniture was designed to be pulled apart and put back together again. That way it would make it much easier to take on campaign with you, that kind of thing. So collapsible furniture is the, the, the name of the, the game. Um, now, when it comes to actual styles of furniture, we don't really have a lot of archaeological evidence per se. What we do have is uh, iconography, that is pictures from the time, which point to sort of how things were made. And you can also look at it from the point of view of, I guess, practical reconstruction, that is to say, experimental uh, archaeology. Oh, alrighty, so what I'm trying to produce is going to be a... As I say, a bench seat. So this would go um, with a, a dining chair. Now it's going to be made from five pieces of wood. Nothing is actually going to be kind of, um, there's going to be no complicated joints or anything. It's all just designed to come apart. Um, I'm not drawing this to scale at all and I'm not kind of any kind of awesome artist or anything. All right, there we go. Now to go with that, uh, let me see. Are just the two ends of the bench which will look pretty much like so. Now um, there'll be four holes in the top these holes co-locate with these All right. and then if I now use a different color you can see these parts then go into, excuse me, um, into this part of the uh, of the bench ends. Rightio. So what we do need is one top. We need two of these supports, and we need two ends. Rightio. Let's talk some measurements. I want to be able to seat three adults comfortably, or four kind of kids, I guess, on each of these chairs or seats. So I'm going to go with 180 centimeters long by roughly speaking 25 centimeters wide. That'll depend a little bit on the availability of wood. Now if we talk materials, 
there's two real options here. In Australia, oak is uh, has to be cultivated from um, uh, special forests and plantations. Uh, we had massive fires rip through the country a couple of years ago. So, and it actually destroyed like something like 10% of the east coast of Australia. Um, and, and, you know, hundreds of homes and so on were lost. So, and, and much of these forests and plantations were destroyed in these large fires. That's driven up the price of oak. Um, and it has to be now, oak has to be produced in a, uh, a part of Australia called Tasmania uh, in designated plantations and so on. Oak doesn't grow too well elsewhere. So oak is a phenomenally expensive material to use in these kind of things. So my option for today is going to be radiata pine. Pine definitely was historically accurate um, because Scots pine would have been used for much of these sorts of things and other types of pine would have been available throughout Western Europe at the time. So um, we have plenty of pine in, available in Australia. Uh, it grows very quickly, very rapidly. Uh, it's, it's not ideal to use, but for this kind of purpose, it's going to be fine. I'm planning uh, by roughly sort of nine months time to produce around about 30 of these seats and 15 matching tables so we'll see how that goes that's my goal um, now we've talked about materials we've talked about dimensions we've talked about um, the history let's talk uh, colors colors basically i don't think the medieval people of the time there's no indication that they used um, particular paints or pigments on much of their furniture certainly not for the um, the free class or the uh, the average day person, perhaps so in the case of royalty, but very sort of um, not really. There's no real evidence for it. So, alrighty, oh, that's our bench seat. Let's um, let's see if we can get this put together today. Any kind of woodworking project like this, you really do need the correct PPE on. That is personal protective equipment. That is glasses, a mask. Ear defenders.
Alrighty, there we go. So that's the construction of the legs, as in the ends and the two kind of supports. That's all come together pretty well. Now I'm going to hit it with a sander and put some varnish on that and then I'll put the lid on top of that. Alrighty guys, all finished, all done. I so much couldn't be happier with this. It's come out really well. There's such a nice finish to it. It's such a simple design. There's no mechanical joints, no complicated joinery or anything like that. It's just simple, straightforward carpentry. A little bit of mass and you've got to check your numbers. But this has come out so well and I'm so happy with it. It's, it's really fantastic and uh, it really not that expensive either. Something like this should last you a long time and it's really easy to pack up something like this and, and put it in your car when you do go to medieval events when they come back online. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.